Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome to the channel. If you've been watching for a while, if you haven't, you should totally subscribe. You know we've been doing this bathroom. Today we're gonna to install some wood look porcelain tile and I'm going to show you step by step how to install tile like a pro. The pre-existing conditions of this bathroom were not cool. One sheet, soft linoleum, overall just very nasty. After some legwork and some easy steps, fantastic. If you have to demo anything beforehand, the first steps will be to get rid of that trim. Make sure you cut down into the trim and against the wall so you don't rip up any of the wallpaper paper. Then you want to tackle that old floor. In my case, I was able to use a oscillating tool and a crowbar to rip up all of the one sheet linoleum, which was attached to a thin quarter inch sheet of plywood, so it came up fairly easily. So we got all of the old linoleum up, and now it is time to go through and make sure we don't have little nails poking up here as we prep for the Ditra. It's a good idea to use a straight edge. This floor is in fairly decent shape, but you want to go along and check and make sure you don't have any big ridges. This isn't a very big one, but if you did have bigger ridges than this, definitely make sure you go through with a belt sander and take those down. At this point, we are ready to put underlayment underneath the tile. This is a necessary step. I have overheard some people say they have not done this and gone directly to OSB. I would not recommend that. You will likely not get the overall lifespan of your tile. You want to make sure it's nice and clean and then wet down the OSB or the underlayment. And this is to make sure that the underside of the mortar does not dry out faster than the top side and prevent good adhesion. If you are using a Schluter product, make sure you check the Ditra manual to make sure you are using the proper mortar for underneath the Ditra because it does vary. I am using All Set made by Schluter and it's mixed very thin. Once I have spread that with a 3 16th inch notch trowel, I lay down the Ditra and float it out with a grout to make sure we got good coverage. And it is always good to pull up a corner here and there to make sure that you have all of that felt paper wet for good adhesion. The Ditra is super light, super easy to cut, and there is no dust, which in my opinion makes it such a fantastic product over concrete board. Ditra is waterproof. You could pour water on here and it will stay there forever or until it evaporates. And to make it perfectly waterproof along the floor, you need to add something called curdy wrap over the seams. And that is what I'm doing here. I layer a thin layer of mortar down and then lay the curdy wrap over the top and squish it into place, removing all the mortar from underneath using some straight blades. Why not go all the way, right? So I am going to be waterproofing up the wall so you could literally, kind of, pour water all over the floor and it would stay there and not cause damage to any of the walls or underlayment. This isn't perfectly waterproof like a pool as there are some openings and you can catch those later. One of the most beautiful features about Dietra by Schluter is that as soon as you put it down, you can do tile right on top of it. Now, it's been about a week since I put this down because we did all the tile in the shower there, which is a separate video, but now it is time to finally do the floor. So I got a lot of mortar dust and chips and stuff down here. So we're gonna start by sweeping this very thoroughly so we don't transfer any of that debris through up into the tile. And then we are going to mix up some mortar and lay some tile. We're going to be using the same wood look tile we used in the mudroom and laundry room. And even though there are some suggestions of how to lay the tile, we are actually going to do a 30 or 33% offset where we'll have one third, we'll have a two third section, and then a full tile section. And I'm going to start with the one third over there. You can start with any one of those third sections. I'm choosing to go with the one third over there because it will allow me to get around the spout for the toilet pretty easily. Those cuts are gonna be exactly the same for this whole side of the room right here, and that's going to amount to four tiles. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a third off of four different tiles, and that'll give me four one-thirds and four two-thirds, and then we should be ready to rock.
As you can see here, we have a couple of round holes that have to be cut out of our rectangular tile. And I do want to measure and lay these out before I mix up the thin set so that that is not setting up while I'm trying to make these kind of tricky cuts. This first one here is going to be out of the first full tile. And I'm going to be using this round carbide tip tile cutter to cut a hole somewhere right about here. And then I'm going to commit a tiling cardinal sin and cut that right over the hole so that I can fit it on either side of this toilet stem because to shut this down I got to shut the water off to the entire house and this is a soldered fitting and I want nothing to do with that so we will do it this way. Then we obviously have a two-thirds piece that's going to go right here and then a full tile and then another one over this side to cover the toilet flange. And I thought this worked out well that I only have to cut about half of the radius out of each tile instead of cutting deeper into here and risk cracking this tile. So let's go ahead and get these cut and then we'll mix up some thin set. is actually a cardboard cutout from a mixing valve. It happens to be absolutely perfect for this. When we cut this out, it would behoove us to cut it maybe a quarter inch bigger on both sides just to give us a little bit of wiggle room. If I marked the tile out on the top, why am I transferring that line to the bottom? And that is so that I can take account for the radius of the blade and not have a bunch of material to remove later. Sad news is I got maybe halfway through with my carbide hole cutting saw and I broke the tile and I also broke the tip of the carbide saw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this to a new tile and I'm going to use the wet saw to cut this. Uh, I'll probably just go kind of square, although I don't know, maybe I'll do it round. But I'm going to go ahead and transfer this and show you how I do it on the wet saw. This is where you can really understand why I marked the tile out on the bottom. I have the tile upside down right now, and that is so that the furthest point of the blade, which is closest to me, I can keep account for and not have a whole bunch of material to remove while I'm freehanding right now to get our round holes. And you can see that radius in the tile, but it's underneath and not visible. I'm gonna mix up the mortar we're using Schluter All Set, and I got a little bit of water in there. We're going to mix the whole 50 pound bag and I like to use hot water because it's easier on your hands so they don't freeze and I'm not totally sure if this increases the open time that you have but it certainly has seemed to for me so I would recommend warm water. This is the same mortar that I used underneath the Ditra and we are going to use it again above. This is a modified thin set mortar all set by Schluter and you can use it for over and under, obviously, and for a wide range of tiles. But always make sure you check with the user manual. Before I get too carried away, we want to make sure that the tile is set square in the room. Now I've set the tub square against this wall, so we can definitely use that as a reference. But I'm also going to measure from where the hardwood flooring of the hallway is, and measure out into here somewhere, and strike a line down the Ditra, so that I can measure from that line and kind of keep reference of everything. So looking around here, we got 60 inches is right in here. That works for me right there. Then I'll do another one over here. And we can use a straight edge to strike a line off of that. I've added a permanent marker line. Then like I said, we can use this line to make sure we got everything square on the opposite side of the room. Put it here so I can actually pull it towards me. So that's 39 and three quarter. 39 and three quarter. 39 and three quarter. 39 and three quarter. Before laying down your tile, you again want to use a damp sponge to make sure you have any foreign objects removed so that they do not transfer through the tile and show on the floor. 
Typically, your box of tile will recommend the appropriate trowel to use for proper installation. In my case, this is a quarter by quarter inch square notch trowel, and we're going to trowel a bunch of mortar in place and then go ahead and lay our tile. Now that the tile is actually going down permanently, I'm using that line that we struck earlier to make sure I have my first row laid nice and square in the room. I am back buttering these tiles to make sure we have proper adhesion and I will cover that in a little bit more detail later. Your best friend for laying tile is a bucket of clean water and a sponge handy at all times. You can use this sponge for everything, cleaning the walls, cleaning the tile, cleaning you, cleaning your tools later on. Very, very handy to have around. So we've got tile set in the larger portion of the room and I ran out of thin set for the night. So now we gotta finish this little hallway section right here. And because we're off a corner and don't have the same reference point over there, I set up the laser and I got a line right here from which I can lay my next full piece backwards and then we'll cut the pieces on either side. We'll basically work our way down using the laser referencing these lines right here. So you can see I filled in the Ditra with, with the remaining mortar that I had last night. That is an option for doing the Ditra instead of doing it all in one shot does take you an extra day to lay that, but it is easier to lay out a nice pattern the next day to set the tile on. It really is a pain to back butter, but these are six by 24 inch tiles and they're kind of right along the limit of where it's really beneficial to do the back buttering. You don't need a ton of mortar on the back, just enough to make it kind of wet so it sticks to the mortar down there really easily. See, not too much on there. Make sure it's nice and even though. Got our reference laser mark right here. So this is where we're gonna start and work our way to either side. Go ahead and knock those mortar lines down. And it is good to check every once in a while, pull a tile up and make sure you've got full coverage on that tile. And that'll help prevent any cracking in the future. I've gone ahead and made my cuts over here on the wet saw and you want to make sure that the factory edge you put that in the middle of the floor and put the cut edge over here which will remain underneath the trim and contrary to what a lot of people might think you do actually need to make sure you have a gap around the border of your floor because tile does actually move. Okay, so this floor is finally ready for some tile. I got the grout mixed up as I showed you just a second ago. And behind me here, I got two buckets of water and sponges to clean up the grout once I put it down. Again, the grout, you want to be like dry cookie dough and you'll smash it into the grout lines, let it sit for about 20 minutes and then clean it off with a sponge. Once you've laid your grout and let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, go ahead and take your sponge that we just cleaned off and we're going to swipe it across the grout line, kind of rotating it up as you go so that you are always applying a fresh portion of the sponge to the tile. We are just going to flip it over and we're gonna do the same thing again on the second side. If you have a clean portion like I do over here, you can re-swipe with that, but you don't want to go back down because as you can see right here, you're just going to smear grout all over the place. Okay, 
Okay, so our grout is all done. It's been setting up for a day or two, so we are good to go and seal it. There's lots of different sealers on the market. I used this in the mudroom in a little over a year, and uh, the grout's still looking good as new. So you wanna grab some sealer. This particular one is quite expensive. There are cheaper ones, but like I said, good results, so I'm gonna use it again. And then you need a grout sealer bottle, which you will run in the grout line, and it drips on this roller, which is pretty cool. And a little bit of this does go a long way. The one quart of this stuff did the whole 300 foot mudroom with the same tile. Well, would you just look at that floor? Just look at it. Man, does it look good. What a huge improvement from that one sheet linoleum tile that was in here previously. There's a couple other videos on the bathroom if you haven't seen them already. Definitely make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the fun. And I really hope that the step-by-step -step how to install tile helped out some of you guys. If there's any questions, please leave them down in the comments below. And hammer that thumbs up button if it helps you out. You may not know, it always amazes me how it always amazes me how there's a disconnect between social media platforms. We do have an Instagram page, link to that down in the description below, if you would like to keep up with some of the behind the scenes and see what's actually going on in real time. Hand me that link. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.